Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 8. I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Today we are going to talk about switching. So welcome, welcome to the switching world. Uh, without wasting much time, let's get straight into today's class. Let's assume you are in office and you are the uh, network administrator of this brand new company. Uh, and your manager comes to you with a brand new switch, hands it over to you and asks you to configure. Now, you have a look, you say a new switch, right? Is this the switch? No, we are talking about network, so we're talking about this switch, right? So he hands you over a Cisco switch, a brand new Cisco switch, and Cisco switch, like you can see, has uh, many, many interfaces. So you get it in different configurations, 8 port switches, 16 port switches, 24 port switches, right? Right, so this is a 48 port switch. Now you can see there's a 48 port switch by the number of ports that you have in the front. So this is the front of the switch. So we have 12 ports here, 12 ports here, 12 ports here, and 12 ports here. So this is totally a 48 port switch. At the back of this uh, switch, like we saw in one of our previous videos, we have uh, different connections. So you, one of those connections there is a console port, right? So like we know, uh, the console port is used to get access to out-of-band access. And if you remember, out-of-band access is the connection where you can see the boot up of the device, right? So it's like uh, having your friend like we discussed if you, you might uh, have had occasions where you want to help your colleague and you make use of remote desktop so you using remote desktop you connect to your colleague you make changes and the minute you want your colleague to uh, restart the device restart their computer you lose access right now that is uh, the problem if you don't have access out of band access to that device now uh, if you have out of band access to this device then even if the device is booting you still have access and you can see everything that's happening you can see the uh, ios being uncompressed and different processes that is taking place on on the device you ca you can see all of that right so that is how you get uh, uh, out of band access another way of getting access to this device is uh, by connecting to any of these ports. Now, if you have configured the management IP on this device, like we will be seeing uh, in this in this uh, video, you can get access through Telnet, right? But the problem with Telnet is the minute this device goes off, you will lose access to Telnet, right? So let's see, let's see how we can do the initial configuration of a brand new switch. Right, so since this is the first time we are actually getting into device level configurations, uh, I need to set few ground rules. For this uh, video series, for the, major, for the most, of, most part of this video series, I would be making use of GNS3. Now, what is GNS3? For people who don't know what GNS3, GNS3 is an emulator that lets you emulate Cisco IOS. Right, so what's the advantage? Uh, in many cases, instead of let's say in many cases I might need more than one device to do something you know for instance if I'm doing routing I might need maybe about four devices now I, I, instead of me buying four physical devices I can make use of my operating system from one of my devices I can connect it onto GNS3 and I can make use of I can emulate that iOS onto multiple instances of that same operating system right so I don't need to physically have five routers I can have one router I can use that operating system I can put it on my computer I will put it onto the emulator I will have five instances of that so you will see that in our latest in in, in later videos of the series but for today now the problem with GNS3 is you cannot uh, emulate a switch because switch has uh, hardware uh, chips like the ASIC the, uh, application specific integrated circuit which makes the switch a switch right so uh, you cannot emulate that uh, hardware feature so we we, we uh, gns3 does a good job with switch but there are some features in the switch that we cannot really uh, use so what i'm going to do is for this video and some of the videos i would make use of another uh, software created by cisco called the cisco packet tracer now Please don't ask me how you can get access to uh, Cisco Packet Tracers. You can Google. You can. You need to be part of a network academy to get access to Cisco Packet Tracer. So if you have access to Cisco Packet Tracer, you can follow me. If you have access to a physical device, you can still follow me. Or if you think you want to do it on a GNS3, 
you can still follow me because you can whatever we're going to do uh, in most part of this ICND you can make use of anything you know you can make use of GNS3 where you have a router uh, operating system and put a switch switch module onto that uh, you can make use of it absolutely no problem it will work you can make use of GNS3 like I said or you can make use of physical device absolutely it will work or you can uh, make use of packet tracer that will also work so it is up to you to decide what you want to do but for my video for this video I'm going to use packet tracer so I will have a couple of videos one exclusively for packet tracer and one exclusively for GNS3 of how to make use of these two brilliant softwares GNS3 and packet tracer I will be recording and uploading it very soon but for now we will make use of packet tracer right so this is how packet tracer looks right so this is a Cisco uh, application uh, I have access to this but if you uh, have access to Network Academy you will ha get access to this uh, but if not like I said you can use anything right so what I will do is I will take a switch because we're talking about switch today so I will take a switch I will put the switch on to the workspace here right so if I double click on this it will open a switch for me and if I go to the command line interface I can see the switch is booting up now this is how a regular switch looks now if you if you take a physical device and you plug it in and you switch it on this is how the operating system boots so you can see the flash the, the, the operating system is getting uncompressed then you will see some uh, you know uh, software uh, uh, restrictions and you know software license agreement copyright information all those things that is displayed here then they will display the platform that it is running on and all the hardware features are listed here uh, and and uh, software versions and things like that get displayed here then you would go into the user prompt now if you remember from our previous video if you have this symbol it is the user prompt right now if you remember from our previous video if you have this prompt this is the user prompt now this is the lowest prompt that you can get access on uh, any Cisco device and um, another thing is if you are using a uh, packet tracer this access like I said is OOB access where you can actually see the uh, uh, device booting up so if you if you're seeing this is what it is doing it's it's simulating an access that you're getting from your console port so this uh, for all practical purpose it is as if I've connected a com my computer through the console port to this switch right so this is the user exec mode so how do you go from user exec mode to the privilege exec mode yes by typing enable e n a b l e hit enter you could also make use of a shortcut so you can type e n and that will also take like i said you can type as little uh, alphabets so for enable if you type e n it knows if you type e it may not accept because there are three words with the letter e now if i type e n then it can clearly distinguish that enable is the only word that you can uh, get by making uh, by typing en right so you can type en and hit enter it will go it will take you to the you uh, privilege exec mode now you are in privilege execute mode now privilege exec mode you have very little uh, limited function that you can do now these things that we want to do we want to change host names log on banner console passwords tell password enable password management IP default gateway shutdown negating command and saving configurations right these are the 10 basic commands that you need to do for initial configuration of your device right so most of the things right these are configuration that we need to do and all the configurations we do from the global configuration mode uh, so configuration that's going to apply to the device per se will go in the global configuration mode so first thing is the host name now host name is a, a change that is applicable to the whole device so it has to be made from the global configuration mode so we go into configuration mode by typing configure terminal you could like i said you could make use of shortcut c o n f t which is config terminals so I would go here if I want to change the host name I type host name and then let's say I put net king right so if you can see my host name got changed to network king right so now onwards let's assume you are on a on a 
now tomorrow if you were to put this switch on to uh, the network and there are multiple devices on the network this is how you would identify which switch we are talking about so the best practice of how to give a good name for your host name uh, is to give a logical name so if you are if this switch is going to sit in uh, let's say the administrator room then you can say admin floor 1 you could you could just give a logical name so you can say floor 1 room 2 right so if you give a logical name it becomes very easy for you to identify which switch you're uh, connecting so because it as your network tends to become bigger and bigger it becomes more confusing if you don't give logical names right so that is how you give a host name now next is we talk about the banner now what is a banner uh, you can set up a banner that is the first thing that anybody logging into this device sees right so how do you set that you set it by the command banner b-a-n-n-e-r and you can put question mark it'll tell m-o-t-d m-o-t-d is message of the day it's short form for message of the day m-o-t-d and if i put question mark it'll tell c banner text c where c is the delimiting character now that's very confusing what it is trying to say is you just start with any character it could be anything right so we'll start with ampersand i hit enter it tells me that okay now i can enter the text whatever text this part the banner text and i have to enter with the same character that i started with right so i started with ampersand so i have to end my message with ampersand right so i will create this message so I'll put all uh, stars I will say the most dangerous switch do not uh, log in right I think that's good enough anybody will get scared ha <laughs> now that is my banner message of the day now how do I check this so I'll exit I'll hit control Z when I do control Z it, it takes me back to privilege exit mode I can hit uh, exit from here right it'll take me out if I hit enter it gets me back on and you can see that my message is here so this is the first message that anybody would see if they log in so this is called the log on banner right uh, you can do I mean, you can get very creative and you can type anything you want but uh, as an advice I would suggest don't don't uh, do, I mean I mean I, I have seen some people who have put like uh, you know text start here you they have just gone on here if you've seen what text start is you know you can put like a lot of characters and make uh, a face of somebody you can do that there's nothing that is stopping you from doing that but just remember that you have to put these the more number of characters that you're gonna put in this it has to save on the the RAM you know you ha it has to save it that file uh, the running configuration file in the the memory of of your device now the more uh, 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 the more characters in the in in that file the more the size of the uh, uh, running conf the startup configuration and it is just going to take more time and just going to make it slow so b best advice is keep it minimal keep the message crisp and clear right so that's that's an advice that i would like to give right so let's go back right next we look at console password now what's console password now console password is the password that is there to prevent people from logging in now let's assume that you leave your uh, device open now i am a hacker let's assume i'm a hacker i get my computer my laptop i get a console cable i plug it onto the switch i plug it to my computer i take a terminal i go into the switch i change the password right or i do something some mischievous thing on there if you put a password on the console port i will not be able to log in i will only be able to log in with that password right so you don't want somebody to just log in to the console and change things right so what we'll do is so first let's look at the running configuration right uh, since i am in the config mode what i can do is i can type the word do and I can say show run because the show run configuration show run command is actually a, a privilege exec mode command so in, from the config com, config fun from the global configuration mode if I want run a privilege exec mode command I just use the word do right so <clears throat> let me look let me see what is there right so if I see into line conf, uh, console so I can see line console there is nothing right so this says this is the entire section right and this is another section this is another section right 
So in the line console section, there is nothing there. So that means that is the reason if I plug in, it is giving me direct access. Now that is the very reason. Okay, another way to end uh, exit out is typing end. If you type end, it takes you back to the privilege exit mode. From here, you can type exit, right? So you exit. Now, now if I hit enter, it is taking me directly to this prompt or the user exec mode prompt is because there is no password. If there was a password, it would have asked me the password here before it took me to this banner mode, right? So we'll, we'll have a look. So hit enter, conf t, right? Then we will, uh, then we'll go into line console zero, right? There is only one console. So that is why we do console zero because everything in Cisco uh, device, it starts with zero. So you start with the first is always zero and then it goes. So we have only one console. So it is line console, right? Here we say password Cisco, right? Now we have set a password, but we have, uh, let's try. We have set a password. Now let's try again, exit, right? Again, it is not asking for a password. Why? It is not asking for a password because we have not told them. We have set a password, but we have not told uh, that uh, we have not told the line to check for password if there is traffic coming in. So let's go there. Let's see what we need to do. So we go into line console zero again. Then we type the word login. Now, what does login mean? It means you need to check for a password. So this is telling that login is required. You can't just let somebody without checking for login credentials, right? Now let's try, let's go out again, right? Now when I hit enter, you see what happened? You put the banner after the banner. Sorry, I, I think I told you before the banner, my mistake, I apologize. After the banner, it asks for a password, right? So if I put the same password, it lets me go in. Right? So now what you've effectively done is effectively prevented anybody from taking access to your device without your authorization. Right? Now only people with this password can log in. Right? Now that is oh. now this is this is a problem. Uh, what because of um, because what it does is if you type something that is not uh, understood it thinks it's a domain name so it actually tries to search for a domain uh, server name so it just tried to resol resolve it to an IP address so uh, could this happen maybe I will um, show how to disable this right let's we'll have to just wait until this times out or we can do control shift and six it will uh, bought it control shift and six now this is all this will also work sometimes it works on physical devices right right so what we can do is we can go in and uh, we'll disable the domain lookup so it will be no IP domain uh, domain lookup so henceforth we will not have that problem so if we go out and uh, we do uh, Cisco, we do the same mistake. It will just say unknown command. It will not go and search for a domain, right? So that that's very efficient. This is one, some of those things that you would need to do on a new device. If, right. Next, we'll look at uh, telnet password, right? So telnet password, we go in configure terminal, right? So like we saw for console, it is line console zero, right? For telnet, it is line VTY. VTY is what? It's virtual line. Telnet is a virtual line. There's no physical line for telnet. Telnet is a virtual line. So line VTY. Now, if you do question, it says zero. First line is zero. And the last line, it says 16. So uh, 15. So that means you can do line from zero to 15, which is nothing but 16 virtual lines that can be accessible on this device. That means if the first let's say many devices are connected, right? You're connected on the network. The first time somebody tries to telnet into this device, it will take the line zero. The second time somebody tries to, another person tries to uh, telnet into the device, it will take line one. Then it will take line two, line three. So like that 16 people can uh, at, at the same time telnet into this device. 17th person tries uh, telneting in, it will say, uh, too many people so it will not let the 17th person come only 16 people can come right so we are taking all those lines so we're telling that whatever we're going to make changes now it's applicable to all the 15, 16 
virtual lines that come in right so we say passwords it's the same concept like uh, what we did for line console so we say password uh, let's say telnet just to uh, differentiate this say it's a password telnet and again we say the same thing we say login that means we don't want people to just log in and come in without the password right so we're telling please check for login and only then let them come in right uh, at the moment we can't make make use of telnet i will um, once we reach to management ip uh, like we see here i will show you how to do telnet so hold on telnet for a minute uh, the next thing is okay the next we'll we'll go into management ip so straight we'll go into management ip because uh, we need to uh, because we we can check uh, uh, telnet so how do we set management ip we set management ip because you need to understand switch works on layer 2 right so there's no ip address for switches so all these 24 ports on the switch you cannot give an ip address on those switch because this is a layer 2 uh, so we need to give an ip address to the switch if we want to access this switch from another device right we need to give one ip address on the switch and that ip address is going to be the management ip so how do we do that we need to do so if you go to uh, show IP interface brief now this is one of my favorite command what it does is it shows all the interfaces on this device so I can see that I have 24 fast Ethernet ports right and I have two gigabit Ethernet ports and then I have one VLAN interface right uh, VLAN is a very big concept we will be getting into VLAN concepts later in the series but for now just know that there is one every switch comes with one virtual interface called the VLAN interface now this is the interface that is used to manage this switch right so what we'll do is we will go into that interface so it will be interface VLAN 1 right we are in the interface you can see that our uh, prompt has changed to IF which says we are in VLAN interface now so we'll go here and we'll give an IP address let's say IP address 10.1.1.1 255.255.255.0 right so we're given an IP address and uh, we can see that this interface is administratively down right whenever you see administratively down that means there is a command on that interface which is called shut down right this is how you shut a port so you this port is shut down right this is how you shut down a port so you can do this on a physical port also you can go into uh, fast ethernet 0 slash 23 for instance so it will be interface fast ethernet 0 slash 24 and you say shut down this port also will become administratively down which means that port is shut so nobody can even if they plug into that port it will not work right now how do we open that port so this is how you shut down so if you want how do we open anything i mean how do you open that port we use by using the negate command that means we say no shutdown right brilliant so you can see that this has changed up the interface vlan1 has changed to state up and that is how you negate any command on a cisco ios so if you want to put anything you just say no before that it is as good as not putting that command so you say shutdown you say no shutdown it is opposite of shutdown as in it's open right so negating any command is by using the word no before that command right so now if I do the same thing do show IP interface brief I can see that interface VLAN 1 has got an IP address now and it is up now right so you can see that the status is up but protocol is down so status is up protocol is down so why is protocol down because it is not seeing any traffic on that port right now because right now if you remember that is the only device that is there so it is not seeing any traffic so what we'll do is we'll create an end device right we'll put one end device here right uh, don't worry about uh, Cisco packet tracer for now we will have another video maybe uh, I will try doing the next video or the video after that uh, where we will talk about packet tracer of how packet tracer works just general overview about packet tracer uh, but for now just know that I'm just putting I'm just simulating a, a PC so one PC I'm just taking a wire from that PC and connecting it to one of the interface so which interface did it go into so if you can see okay see you can see interface VLAN 1 has changed to state up so line protocol of VLAN 1 has changed to up why because it started seeing traffic now this PC came in immediately it started sending broadcasts so he started seeing traffic on that VLAN interface 
and he immediately went to stay it up right and uh, he would have so if you go into this do show ip interface brief now you can see fast ethernet also has gone up so that means i've just connected to fast ethernet uh, 0 slash 1 that means the first interface if you see previously fast ethernet 0 slash 1 also was protocol down but now protocol has gone up because it's seeing traffic on that port and also vlan interface also has gone up because it's seeing traffic on that port brilliant right so now we'll go here like just now what this pc is it is uh, i mean it's just a simulation it you know makes it look like your windows computer so we'll go give an ip address 10.1.1.2 right 255 255.255.255.0 right we don't need default gateway because we don't have we're not going out of the network we are in the same network uh, i will try to ping from here so ping 10.1.1.1 right is that device pinging back to me interesting ah yeah <laughs> right so it is pinging back so that means i can now access now this device can access the switch no problem and this 10.1.1 which is the management ip that is also live now now why did the first uh, request timeout that is because of a concept called arp we have learned arp the first request it didn't know the mac address of that switch so it had to send that arp request so that is why the first request failed but then subsequently four pings became successful so uh, now we know it is live. So what we'll do is try to telnet. So we'll say telnet 10.1.1.1, right? So you can see that we are telneting from that PC to 10.1.1.1, which is nothing but the virtual interface of the switch. And immediately on my command prompt, I see the same login message that I saw there. Now this switch could be anywhere in the network. It could be on the fourth floor and your switch could be on the ground floor, right? But we're coming through Telnet here, right? So it is asking the same thing. It's asking for a password. Which is this password? We put two passwords. One was console password. One was this line VTY password. Uh, so we'll try Cisco, which is the console password. It's not accepting. Now let me try the Telnet password or the VTY password which was Telnet I put that it worked so it now accepted the VTY password so line VTY password is what worked here so that is how Telnet now here let me try enable it tells me no password set that means it is letting me access the user privilege mode but it is not letting me go to privilege access mode right privilege exec mode to go to privilege exec mode I need to create something called the enable password so one of our uh, requirement was to set the enable password now what is enable password enable password is nothing but the password that enables now how did we go from user exec mode to privilege exec mode by typing a command called enable right so what we are telling is we want somebody if anybody wants to get into this privilege mode you need to type enable so whenever you type enable they say it requires a password right so if it will not work without a password so we'll go back to this now this is a simulation of getting console access so I have access to this switch already I need to type enable that's in from global config mode password right enable password enable right I'm just setting a password called enable you can give anything there so I say enable password enable now let me try this enable again I type enable I hit enter it's asking for a password what's the password enable when I hit enter it goes to the privilege exec mode now I have access to this device I can do anything I want I can go into conf D I can change the password I can change host name so let me change the host name switch uh, uh, floor 1 room 10 right can you see I have changed the host name of the device now if I go here you can see that the switch host name has been changed and I changed that remotely through telnet session right so that's how you get telnet access so we did the host name we did logon banner we did console password we did telnet password we did enable password we did management IP we did shutdown we did negating command now next is the default gateway right so how do we get the default gateway we go to global config mode again 
we say IP default gateway and we say the default gateway is 10.1.1.10 right and I can hit enter now you might ask why do we need a default gateway when the switch is a layer 2 device right uh, let's assume now in this case um, in this case we were directly connected but let's assume there were multiple devices right there were this device wherever I initiated my telnet it came from a different network than the network of uh, 10.1.1.1 right so a telnet traffic came to this management IP from a different network now this device has to send traffic back to that network now if it doesn't know where to send it it will not be able to connect with that device so whatever traffic that this device is coming I mean whatever traffic is coming to this network if it is coming from a network IP address source IP address that is uh, different from its management IP it needs to send it back to it which is going to be in a different network and like we already know if it's in a different network it has to communicate with a default gateway so this is how we set the default gateway for this device right so any traffic that's coming from a, a different network it has to send the packet back or the reply to the default network which will forward that packet to the final destination right so this is how we set the default gateway now finally we look at how to save this configuration we have done so many configurations on this device already now how do we save that right there are two ways of saving one is by typing this command called write right uh, of course you cannot do that here you have to do it at uh, the privilege exec mode so I can type write W R I T E and hit enter it will say building configuration and it saved this uh, save the running configuration so whatever changes that we have done so far stays in something called the running configuration right so what happens is uh, when we shut down this running configuration stays on the RAM right so when we restart the switch we will lose all those configurations so what we need to do is we need to write whatever is in our running configuration into something called the startup configuration right so when we do this command called write what it does is whatever is in the running configuration it copies and writes on to startup configuration and startup configuration is a file that sits on the non-volatile or the NVRAM so when a switch boots it checks if there is a startup configuration in the NVRAM it loads that onto the running configuration and it loads the switch so all the configuration that we have done will be back when the switch restarts right that is what startup configuration is now by doing right it does the reverse process it takes everything from running configuration and it saves in startup configuration now though write is allowed it is one of those old commands the Cisco's recommended way of how to save configuration is by this command saying copy running configuration right so let's let's do this copy and let's do question mark it says copy from where from running configuration so I'll, I can copy from flash to somewhere else from FTP from running to somewhere startup to somewhere FTP so, so what we need to do is from running again question mark it's asking copy to where we need to copy it to startup config so running to startup so when I do this it says okay destination file name is startup config I hit enter it says yes and it builds the configuration now you need to be very very careful if you say copy start to run what it would effectively do especially with a new switch is whatever configuration we have done so far it will replace that with a blank configuration so basically we will lose all our work which we have done so far so that's something you need to be very careful when you do right so this is how you save the configuration now if you restart the switch the switch will come back to exactly the state we have right now right so this is how we do the basic configuration uh, I know for a lot of people this will be the first time they're actually seeing the command line interface of, of a device so it could take some time so you might have to watch this video a few times until you get used to different levels uh, like different modes use exec mode privilege exec mode config global config mode then you have different line sub commands then you go into uh, host names and banners and shutdown management IP so it'll take some time so watch a few times until you get used to it but these are some of those basic commands that is uh, I mean this is some of those basic command that you would need to know and this is one of those commands. this and this uh, also is a command that 
does the initial configuration of any Cisco device and this is the beauty of Cisco device. You learn this for a switch, this is going to be exactly the same command for a router later. Right? So just remember the commands. See where hostname is coming. Hostname is part of the global config. Log on banner. It is part of the uh, global config. Console password. You need to go to line console and put the password there. Telnet password. It is again in line VTY 0 to 4. Enable password. Again a global configuration command. Management IP. You need to go into the VLAN interface and give the IP address there. Uh, you should also not. Uh, sh you should also remember to enable that interface because by default that in uh, that interface is shut down, right? So you need to do no shutdown to enable that interface. You need to go to default gateway. How do we set the default gateway? You do it from the global config, saying IP default gateway, and you can give a gateway command. And finally, how do we save the configuration? You can do write or you can do copy running config to start up config. Uh, I hope this video has been very informative, and I hope it helped you. So thank you so much for watching. Like I mentioned, uh, please share these videos. Please subscribe to our channel. We have a Facebook page at Networking Consultant and we have a YouTube page. So you can, um, uh, you can uh, visit both our pages. Uh, share this with as many people as you can. And um, thank you for all the loves. If you have any questions, like I have always told you, please feel free to write into me at imran.rafai at nwking.org i know i'm a little slow but i will uh, especially now i'm trying to give more time to this project i want to finish this series because i know a lot of people have been requesting me and i know it is helping a lot of people so i would love to do whatever is in my capacity to help all of you um, uh, so yeah so i will try and and uh, complete this series as soon as possible uh, you please try to share it with more people so more and more people would get benefit uh, from this video series so thank you so much keep watching and uh, love you all bye bye